classical music generally is you need to know a lot to enjoy it. And that's obviously very difficult, it's difficult to get in. So Conversational Concerts was born when we thought, or in fact I thought, actually it's so much easier to see art because you have one of those walkie-talkie things and it takes you through all the pictures and so on and it just seemed like a really good idea to do something similar with music. And so what I do is I essentially give you the art lover's guide to music and give you some signposts about what to listen to, give you the context, where, why is this piece like this, where does it come from, who, who was it all about, to give you that kind of knowledge so that when you're listening to it, you're, you're up to speed about all the kind of key things that would make listening enjoyable and interesting. Oh golly, I mean just, just from being alive, going through cities, meeting people, going to art galleries, going to theatre, going to movies, I mean, you know, music is inspired by real life, it's inspired by what everybody does every day, and that's how composers compose, so just about wherever, wherever there's something happening there, I guess I'm going to be inspired. I mean, essentially, Liszt invented my job. He was the first pianist to travel throughout Europe, and at that time all the way through Europe, and present concerts and take it out of the traditional places to real people, uh, not just the nobles, not just the lords. He was the person who started us playing the piano without music, which is what we do. He invented the idea of one, one person, the pianist, playing the whole evening. Before that, it was kind of a variety act. So he essentially created what is the modern pianist, and whilst he did that, created phenomenal music which really touched people's souls and towards the end of his life, and I'm playing one of his later pieces tonight, um, shot forward into the future. Many 20th, 20th century composers looked back at Liszt and said he was the person who launched us in, onwards in, on, on route. So in that sense he was one of the key figures, not just of music, but of all, all the romantic figures of artists, of politicians, of philosophers in the 19th century, and that's why he's really extraordinary. Okay, it's clear that it's really growing very, very quickly. There are so many people studying um, Western classical music. I meet so many students, I meet so many teachers. And what is extraordinary at the moment is that actually people are leaving workday jobs, office jobs, to become music teachers, which is, it shows that it's a kind of very vibrant society. The one thing I would say, though, is the, the difficulty is that most people who go to concerts are a very traditional group, whereas this other bunch of people who are studying music are from all kinds of walks of life. And the idea of mixing those two and getting people who are studying music and people from other, other walks of life to go to concerts is proving to be the interesting challenge here in India, certainly, certainly for me and my, my, for my friends here. I've been looking for all sorts of opportunities to take music out of traditional spaces. Um, so the idea of doing this was brilliant. I, I mean, I think, you know, I, I happen to enjoy wine very, very much, so that was, a, that was an added bonus, of course. Um, but the idea of connecting things that people are really interested in and putting them together, um, I've, I've worked with um, car launches and piano recitals and so on. I also happen to love old cars, so that was quite handy. Um, but the idea very much of saying, these are quality things, these are for discerning people, these are for cultivated people, wine, piano music, good food, all of these things coming together seems to me really exciting. So that's why I was very, very keen to do this. Thank <laughs> you.